Uh, don't think I'm familiar with that platform just yet. It's it's uh, launching, I think, May first. They said it's it's uh, similar to Office, but okay, I'll have to check it, it out. Only works with, yeah. Go on, so it only works with, only with higher end like requests and not right. Okay, I guess, quests, rest, all that. Okay, fair enough. Right, please, I'm going to mute you all now while I get going. Oh. So, you know, one of the tools I'll be showing you today. Anyway, so, hi, right, welcome everyone to this nice little uh, online meetup where we're going to show you about how to build, create, and run your own events. And uh, we'll go through all everything we need to show. If you want to leave your questions to the end, as we show up here, uh, we'll get going. Now, a nice bit of warm up when we ask is there is that. You know, we're all new to the sub environment, and most people who come to alt space are they're used to going to physical spaces. So you know how to behave when they're in a physical space. You're not going to sort of run around waving people's faces and things like that because it's not done. But virtual is new. Uh, being immersed into this environment, and people are still learning how you to behave virtually. So a good suggestion at the beginning of any meeting is set up a bit of rules. So one is sit down, make sure you're not blocking anyone else, um, have fun, but also you know, don't run up and down the stage, seated for the presentation, and also uh, save questions for the end of the presentation as well. Um, you can, if you would, just you know, use the tools to question jewelry if you wish. But again, it's down to you when you're running events, make sure that the audience is also prepped, so have a good experience. Um, there's a few events I've been to where people have just run up, they're, they're waving at the stage and they get attention in case of a bot. If you can try and set up a free concert at the beginning, make sure we're all here to have fun and have fun. Uh, if you want to take a seat, uh, Payne, let's find, find a nice spot. I think we've got a few spaces <laughs> free to this morning. So, yeah, just sit down to make sure you're just not blocking anyone else's view because I'll work here. You've you're got a camera all of where people are. Okay, so. Uh, I'm Simon Dirkside Jackson. I'm a Microsoft Windows MVP, uh, mixed neutrality, and on the Xbox. So I get all things. Most of that is just a recognition for things like this. We're out there educating maybe people how to use a lot of Microsoft technology or other services. And I, I just love to teach it. Um, educate people. It's just fun. I've also written a couple of Unity books. So I know what I'm doing when I'm building 3D content and wrapping around things, which also cover all sorts of space. And a lot of other open source projects, mostly in the mixed reality space, where we we'll build help frameworks to allow people to build XR content faster. You know, the whole aim of that being that you write it and then you build it for every single device, so we don't have to keep rebuilding things. It's one of those fun things. But you can look and find me on, on online there. There's my my Twitter handle as such, so you can always see all, what I'm doing, what I'm up to, and what I'm going about. So, why are we here today? Ah, oh, apologies. I've left my phone. Also, my presentation handle. Ah, what a failure. One second, please. Uh, although it's, it's something that goes wrong in a person at some point, and hopefully this is the last. Uh, I've had lots of fun this morning trying to get, get things working. And here we go. And let's present. It's not going away. There we go. Right. There. There's my one glitch for the event. So. Well, here in Alt Space today, it's uh, I found it's one of the most immersive events, uh, at least the most accessible. It had a great social platform for engaging. It has both events like this, but it also has several social spaces which are provided by Alt Space. Okay, maybe that wasn't the only glitch today. I got muted. Okay, so um, 
it's for several different spaces. There are either sort of events where everyone's just meeting it up, but it also supports the ability to have worlds, to actually have places you can explore and navigate and move around to. Uh, and you can also different kinds of experiences. And some of the things I've seen where people have actually done like museums or art gallery exhibitions and things like that. So it's not just a, you know presentation of like this, it can be on for almost anything. Uh, most places or wings or templates, like you see when you're creating the uh, they can support up to eight people, but check under the details of the event for how many and this is not the ceiling, this is not the absolute maximum, it's just the recommended follow up. You can also extend it to almost an unlimited number. Uh, I think 25,000 was sort of seen the number if you, if you really want to get an adventure. The way else space handle is that if you contact the event team at least 48 hours, about a week in advance at the moment with everything that's going on, and they will extend it. And the way they do is that they actually create multiple copies of your event, and the stage area of that space is then synchronized across the hall. People then attend, the space and they basically simply keep expanding until there's enough people in. Um, it can be as as host when we're managing these events a bit disorienting for people who would like to say you're the 81st person and then you're the first person in, in the new room. We tend to do as host is if you're having support and expecting a really large, large event, people with you can go to those old spaces and make sure they help with the audience when they're there because you'll see one person on the road but lots of talking. It works very well. Um, as they need to simply come up, just email them. There's a, a, a link on the site, both in when you're creating the event and on the sort of this port page for contacting them. And but one of the real things I would like is to, and it has obviously both and VR clients. So I'm here in VR today. I have all my, my movie from your hands, but also we can just use on the desktop. I, if I'm attending a presentation, I'm, I must know I do that, use that pre pre preferentially. Uh, obviously, I can wave. If you want to wave in from the desktop, you simply go to your emojis, like a little hand symbol. It's a way of just like show attention or say showing you waving. One of the recommendations I have at the end of this session is to also go to the Alt Space one on one events, which there's one straight after this presentation. I appreciate it. It might be a bit early in the morning for some people at this time. The old events are on, and I'm going to show them as well. Just, just get, get a good feel if you want to the tips and tricks for. Uh, using being a participant and also recommending it totally use stuff as well but my one of my most favorite things and i've just realized i've not got my laser pointer to as well where is it there we go is alt space is free and i don't just mean free for the day or free for the week absolutely everything for the foreseeable future in alt space is free so if you hold, host an event of 25,000 people, it is still free. There's no cost, no charge, and no plans for it. It's, it's a great system taken in by Microsoft, worked up. I mean, it's still a fellow, relatively small team of managing, but they're doing a fantastic job running the service, especially in this, the current times. Well, obviously, here we are. This is another one of the spaces that we can actually set. Uh, this is one of the largest spaces they have after hosting people, where you have a main presentation of a chalkboard or a lectern. Um, but there are literally dozens, well, almost a dozen spaces you can use out of the box, which makes getting, getting set up and getting running easier quite quick. But you can also customize the space as well. So if you want to, um, you can then change it, which we'll also go through today. So, what are we going to do today? Well, so, we're going to obviously go through the basic setter on meeting. This is using the Allspace website to get your meeting crafted. We're going to what we're going to do about preparing your space. You can either customize it, theme it, change it, make it your own. So, I've made quite a few adjustments to this, to this space, including little banners up here to give instructions to the audience, this little component up here, which we'll talk about. Um, We'll go through all the necessary steps for actually running the meeting and actually get reputation ready so that everyone has practice ready. Like anything else, going into an environment to present into cold is not great. Time to practice is always a good idea. What we can do, what tools we have for the present, what tools we have for also running the event. 
So in what I have here, what you you got the tools uh, so that I can actually manage the audience, keep everyone safe, keep everyone unhappy, and also for then also doing questions and answers later on, should the need arise. So. Here we are, we'll start the day where we're just talking to all space and we want to create a tower. So we want to get started and get going. Simple basics, the fact that you will go to the all space website, go to the events tab and you'll click create a creating event as you. You are the host or the manager of the space, which means ultimate rights, ultimate capabilities. You can do absolutely everything. Simply giving it a name and you're telling people what the event is about and also when the event is. And then from there, we're also choosing whether it's a public or private event. And an additional thing you can do is also set a category there, uh, which basically does ace discovery. So if you're having a public event and people want to discover it through the, the UI, the category then help them find it. And if it's private, then the only way people are going to find it is if you give them a link, which will go. I uh, just want to check, show your hands. Can make sure everyone, still, everyone see the slides okay? Yeah. Be waving your hands. Right. So, I mean, that's some, the, some basic setup. Once we've got set up the basic, then we need to, to, need to choose our space. And this is where I said there's a point of space that we can choose. So, from the actual simple presentation, this visa to location over here. I will keep losing where it is. There it is. Um, and there's other different things. And some of them are geared towards presentations, some are geared towards talk shows. Some of them here was just little things like a little boardroom meeting, if you wish, or something a bit more of jazz like polygon undergrounds reality or neon and lights. Depends who your audience is, what is how you want to run it. Um, but don't, don't worry, once you've actually slept your events, if you change your mind, once you've set it up, you can. So once you've actually got your space set up, you then want to set up your crew. Now, obviously, if you're running an event, especially a large event, Show that in fact you've actually got places and people to support you, both moderators and the audience. You have the two organizers in the room running the presentation, or you've got other hosts and so on. So the way we do this is we go actually to our space, we edit it from the website, and then we'll have be able to then add users. And once we've basically given them their alt space, the alt space user, not their email address, their actual alt space username. And then we'll give them a, give them a role. And Yak can give people also multiple roles. Only has every single right. Every, to all other people, you'll have to give them individual roles for the access. So here yeah, we have co-hosts, so that they can actually run and manage the space, which are most things. Uh, moderators, if they just want to be able to moderate the audience, I will go into more of the later. Uh, like, sorry, just broadcasting music. A pilot from like my cameraman over here, who can actually fly in the scene. Uh, presenters and a terraformer and terraformers can do have the magical ability to draft or change the world except when it's running or when it's not running which is an interesting thing to watch out for also we should do Jeff and Rennie recommend to make sure you get at least one moderator to an event uh, ask a friend ask a, a co-presenter or someone else to come along who can actually then help you with this manage the space you can do it on your own but it's usually recommended at least to try and get them to give you a hand so, the yeah, actual walkthrough here, I've, every, every, you'll see in every section of this, I've actually recorded a video which shows, let's go through. Uh, show, can everyone see the video? Yep. So, so here we're going through, we're actually creating an event, we're giving it a name, giving it a description, setting my time. Now, the good thing is the fact that this, these are both text boxes and date control. I either enter the time, manage through the date controls and setting it up. You set it up, you can also copy the time and paste it to the, to the end time, which I find for then just upping it by an hour or two hours or whatever your duration of your meeting is going to be. It's like that's our part so there's several, several ones to choose from. They don't change your event, it's just for discoverability. And then we're setting words public and private and selecting our space and for this demo i think i've done a nice deal but a nice board room meeting well and then can actually go look at also the advanced options which there are loads there i'm not going to go into all those here and those are just things to look at and see how you want to customize your space once we're set up 
we can go and edit our, our edit our event and we can start adding all the roles so we can add here i'm adding my if I, and one little interesting tip is that only a host or a presenter can enter early so everybody else can only enter at the time or when the event is actually running but the host and the presenters can dance so they can then practice and get ready for the event if you need to invite someone else in you can either pull them into the space while you're there or give them a role and then they can find the space and get into it if inviting people is easy and they'll go through that and the place one one of them but effectively it's a similar case of losing my hand i've lost my hand why have i lost my hand Oh no, this is going to be one of those days. Let's reset out of that. Um, there we go. I have my hand back. Okay. <laughs> Let's get on with it. As you can see, I've done presentation things things like this do not face me when I'm running presentations. We almost expect it. But anyway, so we've got our event. We've got a blank canvas, okay? But obviously. If everyone had the same event and looked the same, everyone just will actually get sort of get bored with repeatedly going to the same event. So it's sometimes good to, especially to personalize the space of whatever your event is, whether that's putting up like my logo banners up here, putting up custom, custom banners over here, or in these components over here, we're going to talk about. So once we're, once we're in our own space, and just for the information, uh, you also can do this in your home space. So when you start off, place, you'll go you'll get in your home. You'll have access to all these tools. And what we do is enter, enter, enable the world editor. And then and this will give you this fantastic option at the bottom right of the screen for a bell to manipulate or change your world. Once it's open, you'll get this thing, basically it's called the World Editor Toolbox. Now this manages absolutely everything to do with the scene that you're in. This shows you all the different things that are currently in it. As is lots and lots of pages, you'll see, depending on what your spatial, it will change what you can see here. And then we can actually start adding our own. So these are break, broken up into different categories, uh, which give you different things. And there's also different little tools like, and uh, we'll point out this, this lock rotation tool, which we'll walk through in a bit shortly, which is very, very important when you're starting to put things in this. Because effectively, this is a 3D environment that you're designing in 3D. What we're going to basically do when we're having the content is you're going to make sure your world is enabled and open it. Uh, make sure that you go into edit mode. So obviously, we can only manipulate things or move things around when you're in actual edit mode. Choose what you're going to do. Now, if you want to have photos in your scene, now the key thing here is the fact that they're available for the mine section, and you'll see a photos option to add photos, and it'll give you a selection when you want to choose. But if you want to see photos from a uh, PC and things like that, what you need to do is actually go to the Altwaste website and upload them in advance. Photos that you take with your camera in your little circle bar on the bottom left are often actual camera photos. Um, you want to upload from your PC, you have to go to the website, select it, upload it. We'll show that, show that shortly. So, things that come in under this, like I said, they're broken into different categories. So, we've got what are called pits, and what these are are basically collections of objects which have been created by Altsway. So, there's like a campfire scene, there's an alien scene, there's a home scene, and in there, it's just all the general objects you would see for that. So, seats, benches, chairs uh, there's even a stargate if anyone was just, was just a bit of sci-fi we've got sky boxes which basically change the change the sky night so obviously it's 5 a.m in the morning here you know, a little bit later so it's night time for me so i've got a nice little night time space but you can choose or change what time the sky is in the, in the scene uh you've got fdk apps. now this is what these are here so the hat the wear a hat option there these are basically programmable units which Alt space provide a few out of the box. So like this wear a hat and a few others, uh, which allow basically enable interactivity within the scene beyond what is just the, the basic things in the world. But the the interesting thing here is that if you get to the more advanced stages, you, you can actually create your own, which do different things and basically do whatever you need to. There's a few there's quite a few things to do with that if you really want to go into it, but a bit beyond what we're going to discuss today, well we'll do in a future session on it. 
photos we discussed where any photo you've uploaded into Outspace or taken in Outspace will be available. And then we've also the basics, which is things like to put on the actual stage. There's also things like cubes and spheres and lots of just little things. There's a huge array of things that are out there out of the box. You can't even create your own. So when we're creating space, there's a few things to know. One, this object is this lock rotation tool. And what that does is basically that will change how when you place things into the scene, how they're orientated. So I'm going to show this in the video, but how the way it works. The simple part is that if the checkbox is checked, anything you place in the scene will not rotate. It'll simply keep straight, move around as you move it in place, and stay the same orientation. If we turn it off, then things will orientate to the way I look when I'm moving it around the scene. You'll usually use a combination of both to actually place things effectively in the scene. You have the edit mode option to the very top. When it's on, you can change stuff. When it's off, you can't. Interestingly, is that also when edit mode is on, by default, you can fly. But be warned, when you turn edit mode off, you will fall. It's an interesting little tidbit. Uh, always experiment placement is practices everything when it comes to actually placing move things around a scene is placing 3D content around where you need it and where you want to put it. It does take a bit of practice as we'll show you shortly. And as I said, if you want all photos, again, you need to upload those via the website before being in VR. You can actually do it while you're in VR if you like to take headset at off and upload the photo. So it will just appear, but you need to make sure they're there because you can't just browse from VR. Why that's live, I'm not collapsing now. So here we are. So we're going to, go to an event we've, we've, created, we've created here. And first we'll do is we're going to go and upload photos. And I'm going to choose a photo in the video. Well, there's a lot of my normal shots, but here's the event image from today. Selecting it, uploading it. Like I said, it's very, very, very simple, very easy. There's no bulk cops, you have to do them individually, unfortunately, but, and then that's it. Once it's uploaded, that's now available to wherever you are in all space. Whether you're at your event or someone else's event, if you want to show a photo, it's there. Also, you can only make it persist in the world if you're actually an editor, either a host or a terraformer in that space. So we now have to go to, go to VR and go into it. Uh, this is one thing. This is why I have to record these as videos. I can't show you alt space within the alt space. It's just too much to set. I can't go that many levels deep into the world. So here's the world I created earlier. I'm going to go around and then actually then go go up on my go to my settings and make sure my go to there and make sure I've got the worlds. Anything. Then brings, this brings up the world editor, and you can see this work at all the different options and things. So play, play around with it, tinker with it, see what's in there, see if it's useful to you, and what you can do with it. Go to the mind section, I can select one of my photos, the photos I've just selected. And as you can see here, by default, I'm going to turn on the rotation lock, and the place in the scene. Now, by the way, every time you can, it will put into the scene whatever that object is. If you click it five times, you'll get five copies. If, if you click it, it doesn't show up immediately. Wait a few seconds, because sometimes it can delay a little bit. So once I went with the rotation lock, it didn't rotate. And then once I turned off the rotation lock, it now moves to whichever way I look. Now you'll use a combination of the two for your play. You can also, especially from the desktop on the PC, if you can actually zoom in and out, it will enlarge or reduce the size of the content you're going in. And then it's just around places. And then this is, you know, we can see the showing here several different ways of place. Thing to be aware of is that when you're placing it near walls, places, you know, where you see it initially might not be where you can see it. So you can see a place where I thought it's on the wall, it's actually a little bit further apart. Again, it's still no placement. But what you'll also find is that you'll also experience what's called clipping. So that this is where your content is actually interacting or moving through content for the actual space. You've got the 3D and you've got your content. And 
based upon where you place it, the light is maybe in the wall or out. And the thing to watch for here is that once you're placing it, even if it looks right from straight on, look at it from different angles. What you can find is that the clipping might be fine for straight on, but if you turn to the side, people can't actually see it. Or if it's an SD cake about can't interact with it because the wall is taking well. So in this case, you need to move it forward. So here, I simply move it to a completely different wall, and that will work, work better for my content. So now try to different areas to design the space to how you want to do it. Make sure that once you play this content, especially with interactive content like these, make sure that you can actually look at it from all different angles and make sure you can still interact a lot in an edit mode. So that's what we do for actually creating our space, as it were. Yes, this is going to be fun. So we've got, we, we've created our space, we've set the stage, all that's needed for the presenter to come along. And Altspace, while they don't natively have any presentation capabilities, what it is the fact that they support most browser-based presentation services, that's either slides.com or Google Slides. Probably not every event is about a presentation, if it's simply a talk show or people chatting or music events, you know, we don't need any of this, these things. We just set it up, get talking, and we we'll just chat with the audience. But if we're doing a presentation, we need to get ready. And basically, we've got uh, Google Slides. This is great for static content. So if you're just showing pictures, images, move from slide to slide, that works well. If you use videos in Google Slides, it really doesn't work very well. It's quite choppy. For that, I'd also then recommend the alternative to slides.com. It's a lot more advanced. It's for static content and also videos. And also, more interestingly, what I'm using today is it actually has a remote control feature. So I can actually use a separate device to control this presentation. Because what you'll find is that once it's up on the big screen, it's a lot harder to control. If you're trying to click all move things around. So having that remote control is very useful for actually keeping it running. But effectively, it's for any browser-based style presentation medium. So Whichever one you want to use, test it, try it out, and see what works. Um, one good thing is the fact that both Google Slides and also uh, Slides.com do support importing PowerPoint files. So if you, that's how you wanted to design in your slides and use all the AI features for helping you design, you can. And then you can import them into slide, import, import them. However, once you import them, don't just assume it, it will be formatted correctly. Whenever I've imported them, there's always one or two slides, and for whatever reason, the formatting gets messed up. So in the, in the end, all you're going to do then is go back to your deck, export a picture of whatever that slide is that you needed to do, and then upload that to other slides or uh, to slides.com. And then just simply replace that image. Take it a fine tuning. Get used to the tools. You may even then want to actually start creating them yourself in slides.com or Google Slides. It's up to you. Choose the way that works for you for getting your presentations the best that they can be. So once we've got our content, we've got it ready. Obviously, there's different ways we have to get this into an environment. Now, depending on your space, you'll have, have one of these big presentation screens, which has a browser icon on the bottom left-hand corner, the same as you have in your toolbar. Second, that will then bring up the address bar, and they can simply type in the address to the presentation or the content or the video of what you want to show. You know, this is, for all intents and purposes, just a browser that you can use. How many simple, simple as that? The trick is the fact that once your presentation is running, interacting with that can be tricky. So, we have a few other options available for, with us in Altspace. We also have our personal browser, which you'll notice in your toolbar on the left, you'll have your browser icon there as well. And in that, that brings up your own web page as a screen in front of you. And then once you've actually selected the content that you want you want to use, now we'll stress, you need to make sure it's on the page, in the view, and ready to go what you're looking at. Because once you interact with it, and send it to the screen, you can lose some connectivity in some modes. Once we're ready, we can hit this broadcast option here on the browser page. And that's only available if you have the rights to access or whether you're a presenter or whether you're a host, you'll be able to broadcast to any of the scenes that are there. 
once you click on this, we then have several options. So we can beam images, which means I have my window up and then it will send whatever I can see to the browser on the screen. Or I can see URLs, which basically takes the URL from my browser and then places it on the screen, but then it closes my browser window and I lose any direct control with it. Then basically you can either spawn it as an actual new browser window in front of you. You can place edit and place it in your C. Or if it hasn't supported the press station wall, you'll actually have the option for just sending it to the wall. A little easier for setup. Don't worry, we're going to show you this again in a nice video. Another option to have is a lot of space where you have these little picture booths or chalkboards, which allows you to then select a single image and then it will place it full screen on that. Now, the interesting thing with this is that I found in some cases, like depending on the size of your image or the orientation, you might not display right first time. So then you might need to edit the image into a proper resolution to get to fit on it. Different boards have different resolutions. Again, it's just play with placement and see what works for you. But also, if you're going to put photos onto it, again, make sure you've uploaded them to Altspace before you try to place them, because you can't find them. So, as with before, we're going to turn off any mode. Now, so if you turn off any mode, you will fold like a stone. If you're off the edge of a building, you will fall off the edge. But Altspace will still catch you and bring you back to the scene. So, we're all safe. So we're going to know here, so here's my presentation within the scene, and I can hit the browser button. I can then go and type in the address. As I'm on a PC, I can use my keyboard, which is very recommended. If you're in VR, you'll have a keyboard and have to navigate through the keys to try and browse through it. That's also the one way of doing it. If we can then also, if you have your presentation like this, I'm here, I can take the URL, copy it, and then go back into Alt Space and then just paste it into the address file. It acts like a normal browser, so it should be used to being able to use those things. And then there's my slide item. Also, then I can launch my browser window. Well, over here, over here. Yeah. There, there we go. There's my browser window. And then this gives you your browser screen, which you, know, you can all play practically now, but it will block you view the screen here. We're going to go to the address that we want. And then if we look over here, we now have the broadcast option because I'm the host or presenter of the site. Here's a couple of options, and we'll show you what each of these are like. So if I click on sync URLs, and send it to the wall because there's a presentation wall in this environment. Then it will close my window and send the URL I see to that site, which is why it's very recommended to make sure you're looking at the final place that you want to go to and not just halfway and then have to try and navigate through. Alternatively, we can go back again and then go to broadcast and then we can do beam images. Now, the difference here is the fact that my browser window remains open, so I've still got control over the screen. However, this again is a, it's a, like it's a very say slow method, method, so it's only good for static content. Do not do videos through the, through the actual be, through the actual beaming images because it just doesn't work well. Take my word. But the advantage is the fact that I then have a control panel. Anything I do on this wall then appears on that wall as well. So it's like you know I've, I've got a way to control what the scene is. So if I, if I have several options, I'm going to click through and just show the people different websites. This is a better option to be able to then control and you can place it where you want it to see it. The audience can't. So like I said, different ways, experiment and find out which method works for you for whichever presentation that you're actually running. So there we are. We've created our space. We've set the stage and customized it. And we've got our presenter there. And then we've got a slide deck and we want to show something. So as I did with you today, in case of, you know, People are new to virtual environments, and like this probably the, for the future as, as people get used to what they're working. So my key advice here is the fact that it's make sure you track the audience, and this is in several stages. So once you've created the event itself, you also need to get that event to your participants, especially if it's a private event. So that's take, taking the actual URL. You have to use your own scheduled service, whether that's Outlook or Meetup or Eventbrite. You know, Altspace today doesn't have any in-built scheduling services. Uh, there are some features incoming to help with that, but again, still, it's down to yourself to organize the distribution of that meeting to who are going to want to attend. You'll get the URL from your meeting, meeting site for either copying it from the site event setup, or the simpler thing is just to browse through it on your PC and then copy the URL that's on the address, and people will get to the same place. Then also important is the fact that crafting the email actually going to send to them and giving them a few tips and information. So obviously, tell them where it is, 
but also give them directions to install Altface if they have, you know, don't assume they already have it installed. Give them tips to where to go, where to look, how to install it. If they're new to Altspace, also advise them to also run through the tutorial. This is very critical because the last thing you want is people turning up to your event and having the tutorial in their face as the event starts. It's very disruptive because you can't really experience the event until you've finished the tutorial and people can get confused by that. We also recommend as well that they go to the URL advance in their browser. This is just so they can click on the interest option on the site. This makes it more accessible and discoverable when you're in the app and don't have to try and search the event. They simply go to the interested tab and there it is. They go straight in. And also then, as I did at the beginning of this, whenever you do anything, you know, prep in advance, prep on the day, and inform the audience. You know, give good etiquette of how you expect people to participate and behave in this virtual environment so that they're ready. Just to make sure the fact that people aren't running up and down the stage, you know, blocking other people's views, or in some, some of the worst cases I've seen now, they waving in front of faces they can't see, or anything else. It's a new experience, new environment. People want to play and try things. Um, so just make sure everyone has a, the best experience they can in this, in this space. So as hosts or moderators, we have several little tools available to. So when you're in your own space, and this is also what you're, um, you can't sort of see this in your home space, you have to create an event for it. And you give them certain tools. So the one I'm using now, obviously, I've muted the entire audience. So you know, I can speak, you can't, right? Uh, we also have the ability to then send send a message. Okay, there we go. So you'll all have an event message from from me to actually just broadcast out to the entire audience. Um, you also have this thing called amplify your voice. So what this is is instead of me just talking normally, stood next to you, I can turn on the amplify, and what happens is that. Everyone hears my voice at the same level. So it doesn't matter where you are in the space, you could be out in the, out in the back zone, I could be on the stage, anywhere else. Turning on the amplifier basically has a megaphone to the entire event. There are also microphones on stage and other ways that that can happen. And also we have additional tools. Uh, you've also got, if your event has a stage blocker, so maybe in fact only I can access the actual stage or presenters can access the stage. So people can't wander on and start messing with the presentation. Turn that on means, means that people can't walk up here. They can only stay in the present in the actual seating areas. Then we also have the host tools, which then this gives us really the power behind what is moderating and managing your event. So here, when I launch it, it has two different windows. We have simply got a guest view, which simply tells me who's at this event, who's here, who's at the space. It get, allows me to also interact with them and give them different privileges, so I can either mute individual people. I can actually amplify or give book, uh, speaking ability to look for the individuals. I can also grant stage access or give them host or moderator access while they're in the event. So if you didn't have time to set one up, set up a moderator or host in advance, once they attend the event, you can click on them and then make, make them presenter or host. Quite easy. Now, the other method we have is that obviously when people want to start asking questions and want to be able to actually start passing the mic around, also, we talk about this participation panel. And here, if we then enable this allow hand raises option, which I'll do towards the end of this event, what this does is then it gives you people a queue. And people can simply click a button and then their name is put into a queue for asking a question. It also shows up in the order that people asked it. So it makes it easier for instead of just asking around the audience who's got a question, they'll simply be appearing on this list. And then individually, I can then basically give them speaking privileges so they can actually talk, go through the questions, which we'll do in a bit, and then manage the, and manage the event. You can also, if need be, still access the people and then even kick them from the event if they're sort of not being following the rules or, or being disruptive. We hope that we have a good experience, but fortunately, it can happen. Uh, it actually happened in my last presentation of this, unfortunately. Ah. So, a few tips and tricks for when we're running a presentation. So, first and foremost, practice. Like anything, like any other event or anything you can do, set the time to practice, whether it's a week, a year before. Once you've created the event, the event space is open and you can enter as a host or a presenter at, at any time for the, the life of the event. It doesn't have to be when it starts, it's just on. 
and you can access the only people who can't attend are attendees or some of the other roles. If you want other people to access, you have to pull them in or give them host things like host access. But make sure you have time for both the presenter and also your host to practice with the tools, make sure you're familiar with them so you can actually get, get used to them. Uh, if there is a microphone on stage, now this is a really big thing. So some spaces have an actual microphone on here. I've actually deleted the one from this space. Anybody, and I still do stress, anybody who stands near a microphone will be broadcast to the entire space. Now this includes if you're having a little private conversation, if you're surrounded near a microphone, everybody will hear you everywhere, not just the people near you. So it's something to be aware of. Just be careful, be careful of the microphones because they will boom, as it were. Uh, you can also spawn individual things. So if you click on your settings option, to, like here, I've got a laser pointer or a microphone, you can spawn those into the scene immediately when you need them, if you want to sort of pass it around rather than use the tools. Um, and again, like any other in-person event or teaching space or anything else, be aware of the audience, be aware of how people are looking around, and just try to make a good thing. One of the usual things is things like if people, when they've joined the event, they might spawn into the actual default spawn location. If three or four people are there, they can block other people's food. So advise them to take a seat and sit down and have a good view. Yeah, some people jump, jump in now. And also, again, stress again, at the start of any session, set the scene. Make sure everyone's aware and know why they're here. We do this for in-person events where we, we have a good chat and everything else. Um, I also advise as well is that have some time at the beginning of the event. You know, even in in-person events, when we turn up, we spend time chatting as we did at the beginning of this event. Uh, we don't just jump straight into the presentation. You know, these events are not just a place to, to learn. They're also a place to network and get to know people. And especially in, in these current times when we're all isolated and locked in, Having the ability to sit down and just talk to people, especially as their avatars, is very beneficial. So a lot of time for chat, a lot of time for chatting. So let's see what this actually looks like again. So here, what I've actually inducted my cameraman on. He's going to wave, wave from the scene here. So he's, he's going to be my willing participant for this demonstration. Thank you. Yes, thumbs up. Off you go. So here now. Because I'm the master of the event, I've got this host field. Obviously, now I've got the actual ability to mute the audience. I can send a message, as we just did previously. I can amplify my voice, so again, everyone can hear me, and then I've got the host panel. And the I said, these are very, very simple. Once you're in there, I've got the author panel. I can actually message them individually, mute them, microphone, and the host. Or the last result of kicking them. And so we ask for reason, reasons for kicking them. Just mainly for alt and person. So if anyone's hit for the same reason multiple times, alt and can be aware. Now go to part of and I'll enable the hand raises option. And my cameraman's going to go and ask a question. And then once he's in there, it'll appear in the order that they're asked. And give them the microphone or dismiss that question. It's up to you. And for the close, this hand raise option now has appeared. And this is what you will see when I turn this feature on. Oh, yeah, bye, Master Cameraman. Off you go. That was, a, that was a great demonstration. Thank you very much. He's so, he's so willing. So we're going through this now. So we've got our event. We've created our space. We've got our presentation. We've got our event running. But what happens if you want to actually record it? So most online virtual spaces don't provide native recording capabilities. Um, so you have to actually be able to set it your own. Now, the way you set this up is the fact that you actually need to have, to have a second machine or simply a separate machine with its own old space account. So my camera over there, if you're looking at me, he's Mr. Event Camera. He also was my, also was my name. Uh, and he's my cameraman. So he's on a separate, a separate laptop and set up to be able to record. And he's not like any other old space client, except with a few extra little tips and tricks. So once we set him up, we need to make sure we give him the pilot role. Uh, if you want, if, if you want your camera to get an advance to the scene as well for you do testing on testing with recording, you also make sure you give them the host role as well. You know, you need to add more than one. You then need to set up your recording software on your PC. Now, uh, the software I use is, is a software called OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. I've got a link later to this in the slide. You can use anything else, something like Windows Game Bar or 
Uh, XSplit is, an, is another interesting option for both recording and streaming. Uh, what I highly recommend, especially from the very first one I did, is yeah. that record or stream. Don't try to do both, because most machines will mess up the audio if you try to do both at the same time. If you stream, like I'm doing today, then you can download the recording of that later. If you record it, so you can edit it, and then you can put it online. Do one or the other, but not both. Okay, so once you're all set up, then what we need to do is then actually set up the cameraman. So once the cameraman's in the scene, we give him basically give him the ability to fly in his setting screens. So then that's what allows you to place him like hovering in the scene or off to the side. Different spaces have different good locations, but effectively you place it where you want to be able to be useful. So if you want the entire audience, or if you just want the stage, or if you just want the presenter, or even if you just want the screens, um, it's up to you. You play, wherever you place the camera and what they can see, that's what you're going to record. Once, once we're in place, and then you check the view, make sure you can do. Now, I do recommend you do this on a 2D client. Granted, it'd be quite difficult to do on a VR headset, but if you want, if you had VR on, on a PC, and then just trying to use the preview screen, just don't. Turn, up, turn off the VR and launch out space in 2D and use that for the recording. Uh, you can, if you want to sit, take a seat, just uh, not close up to the spawn area. Thank you. Um, so one, and that's it, once you're all in place. Also, the next thing you need to be able to do is actually to disable the alt space UI. And alt space provided tools for us. Once it's ready, also you don't want all these buttons and things you can see in the screen popping up the actual camera view. So we can go to basic alt settings, items, and have this option for Jimmy Cam. And this simply just makes it just the camera, the screen. That's all you can see, which is then all set up. Now, once it's there, you can't really move the camera much, or you can rotate it slightly. So if you want something to move around, they can a bit. Uh, there is another option in the documentation for actually turning off the view which I apologize, I keep forgetting. Um, and then once you set up, make sure you check your recording settings to so make sure that you, your camera can hear the sound. Um, make sure that the audio levels are correct. Now, one thing I will I'll recommend is that when you set up, also set up what called audio filters in your recording software, because ultimately you hear it's got an ambient noise. If you don't want that in the recording, you have to make sure you can filter out those kind of background noises so, so you get the actual speaking and talking and not noises of car. You'll probably hear in the background we've got cars beeping down the street. They're very noisy. We must be in New York or somewhere because they're, very, they're, lot, they're always beeping. It's very loud. Obviously, if you're recording and you're streaming, you don't necessarily want that kind of background noise. So play with the recording settings to make sure you get the experience that you want for your event. It might be a party event. You might want it. It's up to you. And then hit, and once you're ready and you're on the event, just hit record. And that's it, my recommendation is doing out. There we go again. There we go to the events. Now, one option as well, as I mentioned, so we can set up the presentation in, and we can, we've got our slides to go around. One thing we can also do is if we go back to our event settings, so here we go, and we're going to add our camera on. And we're going to give them the pilot option. As I said, if you want to go into advanced, you also have to, have to give them the host option as well to practice. But one other tip as well, if we go into advanced options, right down the bottom, there's a new URL. And if your, your stage or your theme has basically a presentation screen, you can actually preload what the URL that goes into that browser. This is good for if you've got a presentation ready and you just want it on in the event when you get there, then it, that will set up for you. It's a little less... Thing messing around when you actually starting your event. So, me and the cameraman swap roles today. He's going to be presenter, and we're going to be the cameraman. I'm going to turn on my flying options, and then wave by to the real world my cape and fly up into the sky. I'm going to look around, and I'm going to try and find a nice good vantage point where I'll be able to see, move around. I'll go over by the window so I can see, see a bit better. There, that gives a nice good view of the sea. But obviously, they've still got all the actual icons and things in the screen. Then we're basically going to launch the settings, go to items, and then enable Jimmy Cam. And that's it. From this point, really, you shouldn't really be manipulating or changing the controls, and that's in the scene. 
at this point on your PC, then you only hit record or stream from your software, and then that's it. It's off, go in, check your key levels to make sure it's okay, and that's it. Go and have a great event. And that's it. So that's pretty much all the tools and the things you need to have. The, um, this is Venice Subject Stream, so if you need to watch back the back, you can do. A few last sort of tips and tricks for the whole event. Uh, one, it's always recommended, have some help. It helps to just manage the audience and make sure everyone has a really great experience. If you do want to do recording, you do need that separate machine. They can't do, I would not recommend forward what you see through your VR. It's, it just doesn't work, trust me. As you start the meeting, make sure you're, you're setting the stage and you actually encourage everyone to have a good experience, good behavior, and going around. Uh, there's so many events I go to where there's people running around or just blocking things. They're not being nasty, they're not being awkward, they just don't know how to behave in an event as it's all new. Make sure you have fun and also these are, like I say, these are opportunities for networking. So allow time for the beginning to chat, allow time at the end to also chat as well. In fact, what we can also do in some spaces is that you can actually set up portals to different spaces. So if it gets too noisy, you know, people can go off to different areas. So we could go off into the room over there and have a private chat over there or go over here. But, you know, people around you can still hear you. You can either take them, people can either leave or go to their own homes and have a private chat. Or you as the event host can actually link different spaces by what we call teleports, and those are options in the actual building tools. And those things just to experiment and play with. So you can have a social room which people can leave here and go into the social space instead of the presentation space. There's lots of different options that all space provides you for doing these kind of things. Um, but now key thing to know is the fact that once the time of the event is finished, so you can actually set your event for 24 hours if you wish. There's no limits, there's no cost involved. It's just free. But once the time is finished, once any participant leaves the space, they can't get back in unless they're invited or pulled in. Okay? Um, hosts can freely come in out, but you know, attendees can't. Once they leave, they're gone, and they might make, need to message you or contact you somehow to invite them back in if for some reason they crash and they want to get back in and start chatting again. Uh, but the event space will stay active and alive until the last person leaves. Then after that, all bets are off. You know, it's all it should, you know, the, the, the shutters have been drawn, the doors have been closed and locked and locked. You know, the guard has left for the night, so you're not getting back in. Um, but you can, if, you want, if you're doing a recurring meeting, you can actually duplicate your events, which will copy all the settings in the space. There are other little things where if you want to use the same space for lots of different events, what you can do is in the website and going, I'm waving my hand, but I'm not holding my controller. Um, what you can actually go do is on the website, you go to the world tab and you can create your own world. And that basically is the same setup as creating a meeting, but you're creating like a dedicated space. It's not scheduled for anything, it's just your space. And then when you're setting up the event in the advanced options, you can actually choose to copy that world for your event. Now, bear in mind, it's copying at the time you create your event. It's not synchronizing with it. So if you make changes to that space, then those won't come across. You'd have to then change the, change the, deep, the template, put it back again. Again, something else to play with, especially useful for like reoccurring meetings if you want to use the same space as I've done here. So that's a wrap for here today. So uh, here's lots of links to the Alt, Alt Space site, which you know, hopefully should be familiar with. Check on the Outspace blog. There's lots of different news about new features and things that are coming up. I also highly recommend both yourselves and also anyone who's new to Outspace attend the Outspace one of our events. They're very helpful, very useful. They give you lots of different tips, especially how to how to do things when if you're not in immersive space, you can actually do things more interactively. So we're going to have fun. Uh, links to the open broadcaster software and also the Windows Game Bar if you need it. If you need to find me, I'm Simon Darkside J, pretty much anywhere on the Etherweb if you search they'll find me. Or there's also then the link to my blog, which is on there, which you can see tips, articles. And I will be running, um, I do seem to, Altspace have asked me to keep running this session, so I might still schedule a few more for repeats, but the event is also recorded and streamed, so the link to the actual recording will also be on the event page once, once the event's finished. So I'll update and put that on later. And that's a wrap pretty much so i'm going to open up the host panel now as we've shown you earlier 
And I'm going to open the floor for questions. So. Okay, well, let's just move this. Come on. Oh, this thing. So, okay, so we've got one question from Dev. So I'm going to unmute you. And. Let's try that again. Okay, do I try to accept? Okay, so Dev, uh, you're on the line. Hello, Dev. Oh, I'm sure. one, one, sorry, one last time. There's a few more questions coming in. All right, Dev, I think there's a problem with your microphone for some reason. It's not going on. So you want to check that and then come back. So next up is Gavin. And you should be unmuted you now. Be now. Gavin. Hello. Hi. Yep. Can, yeah. you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, hi, hi. Um, this is Gavin here. I'm all the way from Singapore. And um, I'm actually hi. really interested in this. Yep. Yeah. So yep. Um, I'm working with a corporation that does team building and corporate training. And uh, this is something that's really interesting for uh, myself and my team. And um, the question is um, the stability of the uh, network, you see, because earlier on, as I was uh, listening to your talk, a lot of it was um, kind of, um, you know, there was a lot of static. So I was wondering, I mean, since this is a free space, there a paid space that would uh, enable us to be having a more stable connection. That's my question. Okay, right. so no, okay, all spaces, so, yeah, all no, spaces, all spaces, space, yeah, all all spaces, 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 no, there's not. No, there's not a paid space for all, for all space. It's all free. It's all as as it is. Um, now, all space is geared towards being both both high end and low end um, support. So, if you're having audio issues, generally it's usually down to your audio hardware or how that's working. So, what it is either try it in VR or try it on a two D two D desktop or try a different machine just to make sure. Just try a different setup because generally speaking, that. Um, there shouldn't really be any issues in quality. If you are having issues, what I'd also suggest is if you go to the Altspace uh, site and go to report an issue and explain your issues, and they'll, they'll try and work with you to try and improve how that, your experience and how that works. Oh. Okay, so uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, do you mind if I ask one more question? Sure, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Um, okay, so what is the maximum number of participants that's advisable for a session like this? Okay, so uh, there's one thing. Different, thing, different spaces have different requirements around size. So uh, this kind of space can occupy about 60 people. Uh, some of the larger can take up to 80. Well, these are not hard limits. So if you find you're going to have an event and you're going to have a lot of people, then what you can actually do is once you've set up your event, you simply contact the event hosts. There's a link where you can create an event or you can go to the support page and log a request, and they will expand your space for free up to almost an infinite number. About 5,000 is the maximum. And the way they manage that is that they create several copies of your space and people who are hosts and presenters they're synchronized between all of those different spaces. So everyone gets to see the same same content. Now, only people in the same room can interact with each other. And some kind of disorientation is that you'll see sometimes emoticons and things flying up from people who are not in your space. They're just other people in all the synchronized spaces. But event, uh, old space, again, there's no charge for this. You have the space as long as you, as big as you like. You just need to keep amount of notice about 48 hours generally, but in today's day and age, Trying him about a week or so to give them time to actually get the tools set up and get it done. But again, completely free. There is no charge for doing that, and they're on hand to help and support you. All right. Thank you, you for the. Thank you. Okay. Next up is Tony. Yes, there we go. Hello. Uh, 
that, thank you so much. It was really informative. Uh, it was a great uh, thing to stumble into today. Um, I have a question about recording uh, with OBS, uh, especially specifically all space events. I, I really wonder if you managed to figure out how to get two camera bot is recorded at the same time. If there's even if you've looked into a way to do that without kind of editing it in post, um, you know where you might want to get and the audience at the same time. Maybe we recorded it in OBS at the same. Have you ever seen a way to do that? Uh, somehow um, I, I don't know yes but you're not gonna like the answer like anything else no. every cam every cameraman you need a separate pc because it's a separate client a separate view um each of you can call them things so then if, if you then want to post process and put them into this then you have to put doing post process now the way there is another interesting way of doing it which is a little bit more because that if you've got both cameras streaming um, live, and then you have a, another machine doing the recording, which is simply then viewing the streams from those, and then actually placing mm -hmm. content for the different streams from different parts of the windows, which you can do, you know, obviously, you can have several in, in video input sources and several audio input sources in OBS. You could have a third machine, which is basically doing the actual recording. But also, that's uh -huh. a little bit of a setup, but effectively, then you'd then you, you obviously yeah. need to be able to actually set it up and do it because like any other physical production you've got the cameras you've got the production space and everything you want to manage so you can do it but it's a little bit more complicated okay the best was this the trick you right there but the thanks i guess that's it's just it's an in-depth question so yeah, it's, it's, no. thank you oh, oh, oh because i think was i thought somebody else and ask if i find another uh, another option i'll try and put that up and uh Ultimately, yeah, you need, like, like any other physical space, you need separate production setups for doing the different thing, like mixing streams and mixing content and uh, even switching out or more production level of switching streams out and, and focusing on different presenters and different views. Again, like a dedication production booth who's looking at all those yeah. and how they're getting they're working. So, yeah, th cool. there's no other easy way of how that unfortunately because you at the end of the day that makes he, sense. Another he's machine. Yeah. Makes sense. okay any other questions me. okay right thank you tony okay so next up is all right dev hopefully you've sorted out your microphone issues we'll try and open you up again all right can you hear me okay go ahead dev yeah, yeah I can okay hear you now. yes I, I'm so sorry, I accidentally clicked on the wrong one, but I can't get out of here. Muted the whole audience. Could have by chance, like, just pour for me and my friend, and then you could just dead you. I love your, I love your um, projection rated here, presentation. It's very Okay, no, yeah, smart. Yeah, no, I'll turn it off mute all as soon as you like do the presentation part. All right, don't worry. Thanks, my man. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, so next up is... James. Okay, James, you should be online. Hi, Simon. Uh, thanks for your presentation. It was really, really good. Uh, my question is, uh, as far as building out your slide content and the, the side uh, images you have, do you have a recommended resolution that you would build out your slides so that they are kind of optimized for alt space? Um, the general rule of thumb, the higher the resolution, the better. And then the old space will scale it and put it down. Now, the reason for that is, us, is that uh, old space has a nice trick where uh, it will use this, it will balance the resolutions for whichever device is connecting to it. Whether it's a low scale device like the Quest or a PC, and it will scale down. But generally, if you look at some of the other images they do, it's like 1920 by 1080 is, is a good bad but, um Ultimately, if it's lower or higher, it will simply scale on the actual browser screen to show what it is. Okay. And each device will see that spot, what, how that browser, the resolution of that browser has worked. So it's a get like, like any normal browser, realistically. So you can browse different things and do. Although I wouldn't recommend trying to browse to a VR yeah. site in Altspace because I'm not sure if it's, it can handle the inception. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. My presentations are generally doing 1024 by 768, mainly because when I'm doing in-person events, or I used to do in-person events, that works best for most different hardware and equipment that you went to. So it's always my good baseline to work from. 
but you can use higher ones and it will scale it for you properly appropriately. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, it looks like Gavin's got another question. And go, Gavin. Go, Gavin. All right. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi again. Thank you. Um, yeah. So um, I understand that you actually have some um, the default games that you have as part of Alt Space. Um, we have games as well because we are a game building company. But um, are we able to customize according to the capabilities of Alt Space to introduce them to our participants as part of the space as well? And if if how can we do it? Okay. Just mute again. Uh, right, okay, so there's a bit beyond, bit beyond the scope of this talk, but Allspace does have a quite um, growing developer platform. So this is, these are often the themes and spaces that are actually created by Allspace themselves. You can create your own world to use it, but that's as much as creating the static content. You then also have what they call their, their developer toolkit, or their MR, which allows you to build your own interactive content. So like this wear a hat feature over here, which is one of their little SDK components um, off to your left or behind you, you can have a look later. Um, they give a little interactive to wear, but you can see your light hat, so that was a, a nice hat feature. Or you can run the program you want. Uh, these are all written in TypeScript, published in Allspace. Um, but what I recommend, if you want to know more about that, go along to the, one of the Allspace uh, SDK developer events. They're uh, repeated about twice weekly at different time zones. And the guy who runs that, Stephen, he's very well up on how, how the developer kit works. In fact, he's one of the developers who's building the developer components. I will be at a later date doing another talk about actual doing development, um, about doing things in Unity, building your own script and components, and lots of different things. Um, not to worry about others. You know, there's a few technologies involved, but obviously you just play with it and you can you to create almost anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, and there we go. Excellent. Right. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. That right. answered my, my question. Well, thank you. Okay, good. Right. Okay, that's the end of the questions. So, if you're there in one second, why stop?